Tatiana, I'm yeah. very, very pleased to see you again in Brussels at the Parliament. You've been the first and foremost MEP, as from my perspective, in London. Coming from Latvia, what does the whole situation look to you? The situation is, is uh, have been a mystery for me initially when I received the first letter from one Latvian citizen, a resident of Netherlands. Uh, she was deprived of two miles, of nine years. Jumiles and they were sent to social care. Uh, and then I have discovered more and more cases. And this uh, situation is not uh, uh, is elaborating in, in the worst direction, uh, despite all the efforts uh, undertaken by authorities, uh, uh, executive authorities of Latvia, such as uh, Ministry for Judiciary, Ministry for uh, Foreign Affairs, consulates. We managed uh, to enforce them to, to take uh, part in all proceedings concerning Latvian citizens when being abroad. Uh, also, not only my, uh, my part, uh, my activities as a member of the European Parliament, but we added uh, some interested persons in uh, Latvian Parliament, members of uh, Latvian Parliament, and they, they managed even to organize a hearing within the Committee on Human Rights. Uh, but still, all our uh, all our efforts did not stop this uh, situation of withdrawing children in Britain. For, for, in particular. And uh, I have uh, data from Latvian Ministry of Foreign Affairs that only for two first months of this year, January and uh, February, 11 children were withdrawn from the families of Latvian citizens in Britain. 11 children in two months in the yeah. UK alone. It's, it's a lot. Huh? It's a lot and it's too many and nearly every child is too, too many it seems. Um, I, I have observed the trend that foreigners seem to be targeted. Can you yeah. confirm that? Yeah, I think that's... Uh, and the foreigners mostly from uh, EU, um, Eastern and Central Europe. Eastern from European new countries. New EU member states. New EU member states that they, they come for jobs and they lose their children. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the pattern. What do you think we as petitioners or uh, parents deprived of their children could do? Yeah, the uh, uh, only way is to raise more and more awareness. You, uh, we have first signs of, of positive, um, positive behavior uh, and also a bit reflection of those concerned of their uh, not full, how to say, Doing Im 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 immunity. From, from being uh, questioned, uh, the, ah. their behavior. I, I mean, the social workers in Britain, also judges, since, uh, first of all, we managed to involve embassies, so embassies are representing during the court hearings. We managed to have a fact-finding mission to Britain, uh, headed by the proper chair of petitions committee, and with the uh, full representation of all political groups. And uh, the agenda of these hearings, is, is, uh, of this mission, which took place in November, was very tough. And we spoke to all parts involved, including uh, judges, social workers, uh, people, uh, NGOs who are just standing on the rights of uh, defending uh, uh, the rights of families being deprived of children. Uh, also, we uh, met uh, former and actual members of um, mm -hmm. uh, parliament. Uh, uh, so, uh, it was uh, also representatives of, of interior uh, enforced uh, 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 how to, you, you are calling them uh, intelligence service, etc. Scotland Yard in, in Britain, uh, policemen, and um, 
even social workers uh, were not so one-sided oriented. Some of them doubted on the justification of their too much uh, of their offensiveness when deciding to deprive uh, parents from from their children. So we we have just today passed by the vote on recommendations uh, from the drawing from this fact-finding mission and description of activities we undertook uh, during this fact-finding mission is also very exhaustive and very uh, uh, very honest and uh, objective uh, and recommendations are the ones we spoke uh, a lot about first of all the, the recommendation to inform immediately when the, uh, the child is uh, uh, withdrawn uh, uh, appropriate embassies uh, uh, who's um, representing the country whose citizens are these children or parents or both uh, also request to define uh, better and to investigate better the situation of the child itself because uh, uh, there is a misuse of the term habitual residence of the oh, yes. child uh, even when child can be uh, not all the time um, living in Britain uh, or visiting parents but returning back to very often to great parents who are caring them when parents are leaving Latvia for, for Britain to work, for work, for, for, for um, some employment. Uh, and uh, despite all this fact, children are uh, regarded to be residents of Britain. Uh, also in Latvian civil code, it is told that uh, any um, person can have more than one place, place of, of residence. Of per permanent residence. Yeah, so uh, that concerns the possibility to transport the case to the uh, jurisdiction of, of the court of uh, the state of citizenship, not the British court. And here, uh, unfortunately, up to now, we did not have any simple um, example of um, agreement to give up uh, this, the case from British jurisdiction to another jurisdiction. And then British courts and British judges are thinking, are, are convinced that they are the best ones all over the world and uh, it's their uh, capacity to, to do all the best for, for the child which is questioned by, by many people. And um, there is an interesting case. I don't want to discover the name, uh, but um, there is a withdrawal of child from mother. And um, uh, we managed to involve immediately a Latvian embassy and a Latvian consulate. And uh, last uh, one month ago, uh, we were upset of the judgment not to agree to transpose this case to Latvian jurisdiction. Also, there was a proper request from Ministry of Justice, from Foreign Affairs Ministry, consulate was represented. There was a decision that the sister living in Latvia can, be, um, uh, can take care of the child as a care person. Uh, instead of mother, if, if they think that mother was no good. Uh, um, behaving wrongly uh, with respect to the child. All, uh, but uh, all this finish, finalized with refusal to transpose the case. But in one month, last Friday, uh, the proper British court was positive and they took accusation of mother beating uh, the girl. And there was wrong evidence, and they, took, they decided that the evidence was wrong, and it, it was not proved. And they uh, um, changed the decision how often she can um, meet the daughter. Now yeah. she received more often um, visits. 
and uh, she was very positively um, uh, how to say she she has a lot a lot of hope that the next uh, trial in three months it will be in June uh, will finally decide to return uh, to, to, to return to her uh, the, the daughter and uh, I received very positive feedback from from her family from the sister living in better so there is maybe hope. something something is changing to the best side I hope so I think we need to close there's too much that too many people coming out of the room now there's too much now is it okay to continue because uh, after having talked to more petitioners today, I thought it might be a good idea to come up with an international petition, especially between Germany, Sweden and the UK. Um, would that help, you think? Yeah, why not? Uh, you can table the text and then, then gather, gather signatures in all three states. We are doing uh, one uh, international petition on another issue on mass statelessness. Uh, from both Estonia and Latvia. We oh, yeah. did it. Um, this is a problem, particular problem of Estonia and Latvia, my state and neighboring Estonia. When reconstructed pre-war citizenship, many of people found themselves uh, stateless. stateless. All those who moved to these territories after the Second World War. And uh, we managed to table this petition uh, in previous legislation, separately from Latvia, separately from Estonia, but now we are gathering to get, uh, signatures thanks that to the fact that in the new uh, parliament elected in 2014, we have more representations of those being aware of this problem, and we have representatives of different political groups giving a majority now for... Uh, tabling this petition finally to plenary to, to have a recommendation and resolution on that subject. Apropos plenary, do you put a lot of hope on the plenary debate next week? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it is a progress. Since, uh, since uh, the committee of petitions, by different reasons, did not manage to uh, receive a majority of political groups, it is always needed, that's uh, politics, we, we need a majority of elected persons to, uh, to push forward some, some text, some resolution, some question, some debate, and uh, unfortunately, the uh, committee of petitions was reluctant to, to have a consensus for moving some questions. The very same problem of statelessness was blocked by right-wing uh, parties, uh, also members selected in the very same state as uh, I am elected from, but representing just, just opposite uh, political uh, view and political platform. Yeah. So, in the case of, of um, child protection, uh, there are evident uh, differences between right wingers and the left wing politicians. And some of them think that state must interfere much more, and the parents uh, parents uh, are not uh, able to to. Look uh, to to be uh, involved in the destiny of their children as far as they seem to to look for, and uh, it, it depends on traditions, of course. I I think that this approach is neoliberalism, some kind of neoliberalism, which is repeating accusations on the beginning of 20th century uh, against uh, communists, uh, against Bolsheviks, accusing them to abolish the right of the family, to, uh, uh, to work for collectivization of children and then giving them to, to the state. Uh, uh, care, etc., etc., and uh, now this neoliberalism 
repeats these uh, accusations because it, these accusations were false accusations. Of course, there were many children without parents after the First World War. It was a disaster also in Russia. And uh, a, a lot of uh, children establishments where children without parents live, were living together and uh, educated and so on were created in this time. But it was a uh, situation uh, not created artificially as it seems to be now when children are sim simply taken away of, fam of, of uh, families which are, yeah, you can doubt. Yeah, We have heard from one judge uh, in Britain when we have met, he himself was uh, educated in care family. And his approach was that it gave him chance to the good career. The, uh, he was taken from lower uh, classes, uh, uh, strata of the society to the middle uh, strata of, of, of so-called middle class, and it gave him more chances for a career, for education, etc., etc. And he told that um, it must be most as a rule to take children from problematic families well, while, for example, my point of view of when I'm a person coming from mostly traditional society, being orthodox, people in orthodox, educated in orthodox belief, uh, I think that even some default in, in the family, no one is perfect, and maybe some problems uh, occur, uh, but seen still uh, native bi biological parents are biological parents. And the, even children withdrawn from families, we know a number of examples, they are looking for their biological parents, their uh, love, uh, their biological mother, despite maybe her deficiencies. And, and uh, you have, that's, that's a, a, a problem of just of vision of a human being for, yes. for which purpose he is born, what yes. is tradition for him, what yes. is a family for him. Yes. And here we, we find also different political opinions in, on this matter. You started by saying raising awareness is the most important. Have you been aware of uh, getting children adopted for the purpose of abuse? Unfortunately, yeah, I cannot, um, being a, a mathematician, I, I, I cannot make a statement, yeah, since there is not yet a proof uh, of, of this, uh, of this uh, allegation. allegation, of this allegation, of this uh, formula, of this suspicion. Uh, it's very difficult to prove. Well, it so but, happens that I know a case. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, we have also data, uh, mostly concerning, uh, to my regret, Roma families and Roma children. In the UK uh, or anywhere. You see, um, is, uh, there is one new member state where international adoption is completely prohibited, and this is Romania. And uh, Romania just tackled a number of cases of uh, such kind of uh, usage of children from Roma families for not for adoption but just for, just for care a, well. another another use for trafficking for uh, for different and completely unhuman purposes I don't want to mention but you can <laughs> suppose what, what it is what, yes, we, what we are speaking about. Yes, so the decision of the country was to prohibit international international adoption ah, totally. As a safeguard. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Is there anything else you'd like to add to complete no, this <laughs> it's, it's fabulous <laughs> conversation? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very, very, very I much. Think, it uh, certainly gives me hope to continue as well. Yeah, I have answered most you certainly have, yeah. and I and I feel confirm in what I wanted to take forward to go home and uh, to collaborate yeah. and with. Thanks for coming to Brussels. Well, thank you for having us and for hosting us yeah. so beautifully. Thank you.